So today I'm very fortunate to be sitting next to Rodrigo Nino. Thank you. Uh, please say hi to everyone. Hi everyone. And uh, we are at his place, one of his places in New York. It's called The Assemblage. And uh, you can check out, of course, by going to the link of what The Assemblage is and learn all about it. But Rodrigo has a very interesting story. He's from Colombia. I've been to Colombia literally a hundred times over the last 30 years. But uh, he's lived in the United States for more than 20 years. And then about eight or nine years ago, you had this kind of a call, right? Yes. Something happened. Seven years ago, actually. Seven years. What yes. happened? Please tell our audience. Okay. Um, so basically what happened to me is that I was diagnosed with uh, stage three metastatic melanoma cancer. I'm 48, that happened when I was 41. And I'm an economist and a real estate developer here in New York. So I was very addicted, I would say, to secular validation, whatever couldn't be demonstrated scientifically, whatever, whatever wasn't material, effectively didn't exist to me. And then there I was, suffering of this terrible cancer uh, with a very bad prognosis and uh, with the imminent fear of dying. Uh, and I couldn't find answers in this that we call reality. So I had to remove myself from my comfort zone and that took shape in the form of ayahuasca sessions deep in the jungle in Peru. And ayahuasca has a molecule called DMT that fosters what it's called a mystical experience that has been analyzed by many scientists, but in particular by two called Panky and Richards that created a questionnaire that is accepted by the FDA and the DEA now in classifying this mystical experience. But my take on the mystical experience was that when I was in the unknown, like I call it, it really, it really felt more familiar than my definition of home. It's like I had been there before. It felt uh, like family in a number of ways. Um, I also felt that it was more real than this reality. It felt like my baseline reality had shifted. Um, I also felt that there was this sort of membrane of light that connected all living things and beings together. And finally, I felt this light inside that people call higher self, inner self, spirit, soul, probably because of my uh, Catholic upbringing, I call it soul, that uh, I had and that I had somehow forgotten about. Um, and with that sense of familiarity in this new version of uh, reality, um, I was there experiencing this truth without proof that I couldn't validate in the secular tradition that I was so used to. So, and yet, you know, it was very intense, the insight, you know, that I was truly experiencing a higher version of myself, a deeper version of myself, another dimension of myself, more than what I could possibly see and touch. And with that experience, I also was able to objectively, from a point of distance, observe what was happening in this that we call the physical reality. And what I saw was very interesting from that place of compassion, unconditional love, uh, non-duality, uh, no violence or antagonism at all. I saw from that standpoint how this reality that we're living in was essentially shifting into something uh, that was coming closer to what I was experiencing. And that was um, the genesis of my mission in life, to effectively from that moment on um, assist others through disseminating information that would contain these magical lies, if you want to call them somehow, this truth without proof, uh, starting with the one that there was in fact that we all could experience without necessarily having any sort of psychedelic journey, just by surrendering to the fact that there may be a higher self, an inner self, an extraordinary version of ourselves. Just like we have a pineal gland and we don't need to rationally touch it or validate it, we can see that it is there. We can feel that it is there. And we may also 
be willing to make the choice of accepting that it is there and connecting with it so that we can raise our frequency and have a more joyful life. One where we don't deny our individual interest, but with that one where we fulfill that individual interest as a function of the collective well-being. Because if we analyze, you know, those visions uh, by analogy with a body of cancer, like the one that I had, effectively we have the opportunity now to determine if we were the cancer cells of whether we want to survive or not. And we can effectively decide if our individual interest that is at the expense of the collective is going to effectively end up killing the host of this planet and of this society that we're living in, or if we are just willing to surrender to the fact that there is this extraordinary version of each one of us and we can evolve into a place where we can fulfill our individual interest as a function of the collective interest so that we can truly enjoy that new realm of existence. So Rodrigo, uh, you're cancer free now. I am cancer free. Okay, now all these years I've been sharing with you that uh, the fear of death is the primal fear that we all have and it comes from a false identity. Uh, our construct itself, which actually is a socially induced hallucination. Behind this uh, constructed ego encapsulated body, uh, there's a field of infinite possibilities, infinite correlation, infinite creativity, infinite love, compassion, joy, equanimity, and connectivity to all that exists, inseparably, inseparability to all that exists. And every other fear that we have, every other fear, is the fear of death in disguise, of the fear of, as Rodrigo said, the unknown. But what if the unknown became familiar to you? And what if you realized that your true self is never born and is not subject to death? The only thing that dies is an imagined, constructed, ego-bound identity. Beyond that, is a domain of infinite possibilities. And in that domain of infinite possibilities, when you combine focus intention, transcendence, and what we call meditation, then you achieve these extraordinary abilities, these amazing abilities which people call uh, psychic abilities, but these are actually dormant, non-local potentials that we all have. Now, Rodrigo, as you had this experience, you also somehow created this place, this beautiful place where I am right now. It's called The Assemblage, and you have three of them in New York. What's your vision with The Assemblage? If you analyze this realm of existence that we're in right now by analogy with a fish tank with a few goldfish in them, in it, and you would, you would understand that Though the fish in the fish tank don't know what water is. But if you understand that only through change is where you can see what is going on, like putting bubbles you know, in the water, or like putting some blue tint in the water, or even taking one fish and removing it and showing it you know, the objective perspective at a distance and you put it back, you would be able to, br that fish would be able to bring that knowledge, that experience, to disseminate it with everybody in the fish tank. So I feel that, like I said, we don't necessarily need to journey. We just need to surrender to the fact that there is something beyond the fish tank where we are all present as well. And the assemblage essentially is uh, the manifestation of what I saw. In a way, it was like a puzzle that I had seen that when I came back from these journeys in the jungle. Uh, all the pieces, you know, were scattered all over uh, the world. And I started uh, remembering those little pieces and putting them together. So the assemblage is truly a place where people converge to collectively uh, create a new version of reality. That is to say, one of consensual belief, where we can start telling a new story to each other, one from relating from the extraordinary self to the extraordinary self. 
So it's very interesting use of words, remember, which means to bring together that which was dismembered. We are already in this society, this insane world, we are dismembered, we are fractured, we live with the fragmented self. To remember is to come home uh, where we started from. You remember the T.S. Eliot poem, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of our journey is to arrive where we started from and know the place for the first time. Or when Rumi says, this is not the real reality, the real reality is behind the curtain. In truth, we are not here, this is our shadow. So what uh, Rodrigo had is a remembrance of the home that none of us ever leave, we just forget that it's there, the connection to the source is there, otherwise we wouldn't be even able to have this conversation. You know, every thought we have, every image we have in our consciousness, every sensation in our body, every perceptual experience is orchestrated by this consciousness which is whole, which is not fragmented. And our conditioned mind so overshadows that, that we forget. So that's a very beautiful expression to remember. This place is for remembrance. And it's a beautiful place, the assemblage, in New York City. If you're here, check it out. I'm here at one of their places. It's on uh, 25th Street. And uh, I think it's uh, between 5th Avenue and uh, east of 5th Avenue. But you can check it out. Go to the website. Find out more about this. Because if we want to create that uh, thing we've been talking about all these years, a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world, then everybody has to come together. We need that critical mass of consciousness that can be the change that they want to see in the world. Peace can only be created by those who are peaceful. Love can only be shown by those who have loved. Otherwise, it's just hocus pocus, it's activism, it doesn't work. We have to be the change we want to see in the world. And I invite you all to show this uh, video to all your friends. So if you're liking this conversation, press the button which says like, share it with your friends, and uh, we will pick up this conversation because I was telling Rodrigo, you know, we've done now 700 meditations with Oprah. I'm going to be launching a new program in the Hispanic world with many people that I can't name right now. But we need that critical mass and we need you to be involved in this change that is happening anyway. It's a phase transition in society that we are in the midst of right now. We can be part of it. The train is leaving the station and either we are on it or we are left behind. Rodrigo, what is your wish for the world right now? Many people are uh, listening to us, watching to us and how shall we get together to actually create a movement in the world? Absolutely. I feel that um, what I would like to do is to extend to you an invitation. It's an invitation to feel whether what I'm sharing with you right now, more than believing in something that I'm telling you, is something that you can remember, is something that you can find within. I call it um, not even deja vu, but I call it bujade, because it's truly remembering that there's more to you than what you see. And all it takes is to make a choice in committing with your extraordinary so that you feel that light and the power that is in you. And if you do accept this invitation, we would invite you to come together with others right here at The Assemblage who also feel the same way. Uh, visit us on theassemblage.com and we look forward to meet you in person. And more to come, okay? more to come. Thank you very much. Peace, God bless, and let's move in the direction of a more peaceful, joyful, sustainable, healthier world together. Thank you very much.